Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is the G Shit Podcast, where we focus on family, friends, finances, freedom, and our future, and f- everything else. Why am I hearing that? Oh, I'm listening to myself live. That's what happens when you go live. Once again, this is the G Shit Podcast, where we focus on family, friends, finances, freedom, and our future, and f- everything else. This is the G Shit podcast this is g shit live and we featuring wilson lee and cns comics stories for store oh shit i fucked that up we bringing in wilson next we gonna rock with it anyway baby cns let's go Everybody, please welcome the Cosmic King himself, Wilson, founder, publisher of CNS Comics. My good brother, thank you so much for joining G Shit Live this evening. Thanks for kicking it with me, man. And I'll do it for y'all live right here. I the slogan. Let's CNS go. CNS Comics. Storytelling that storytellers love. <laughs> Boom. That's me on the on all the little videos and stuff at the end. That's trademark. We trademarked on that. So let's talk about that. You said it's storytelling that storytellers love. Storytelling that storytellers love. That is, uh, that is the uh, foundation from, from a conception of CNS Comics. I really fell in love with the story I was telling myself. Like I started writing it, but the reason I came back to write it was because I wanted to tell myself the rest of the story. And that's kind of how the tales of the stars really originated i was i was gonna write like i'm a lord of the rings nerd right i like dungeons and dragons all that all that good deep nerdy stuff so i was gonna write like this big epic novel it was about to be like my lord of the rings type of story and the uh origin point was gonna be like the the last couple free peoples were fighting off all the corrupted humans that were left in this world and uh instead of surrendering they chose to fight to the death so like the dude was like you can give up your light and become corrupted like us. You'll live forever. You'll be part of this whole that I am, this collective that I'm making of darkness. You just got to give me your light by your will and it'll all be good. And they were like, no, nah, we rather, if you're going to extinguish us, extinguish us. So Talasha, she on your chest right now, she beams down Talasha. at this moment and starts wrecking shop. Like she's slaying everything, everybody. And the reason she does it, she says, is because you guys in the face of, of your destruction chose to remain who you were as opposed to uh, joining the darkness. So she jumps in to save him. But then I was like, who is Talasha, the immortal queen, and why does she exist? And I kind of got caught up on her. And that's where I began telling myself the backstory of a being that would have the power to do all the things that that she ended up doing in that in that scene. So I still have that original scene. It will emerge at its own time um, in the timeline in the series, but that's where the universe really emerged. Wow. This theme of storytelling, I'm, I'm just curious, like, where did that passion really begin to craft your own stories and characters and things like that? I think that might have been an out the womb thing. There is a, as soon as I could talk, I was telling people stories. I was like obsessed with dinosaurs. Like I, I gave this semi captivating speech. It was only captivating because all the adults were like, how is this little person able to talk endlessly for this <laughs> long about? So how have you been alive long enough to have this much to talk about type of thing? But I, I was then telling different stories about dinosaurs. I, I've always been about the stories. I love to read and then, different mediums of storytelling. But the reason I think storytelling itself um, is important is because the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and about the world around us are really what ultimately shape our perception. Any history is essentially just a collection of stories that we've all agreed to tell ourselves about where we are, where we come from, who we are. So it's a, it's a, far more powerful thing than it seems like when you're just like, oh, it's a story. But when you really think about what stories are and what they can be, they're really what humanity's actually built on is, is the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. So 
um, narrative is powerful and the, the story you tell yourself inside your head is is probably the most important story of all right it's that's what's driving your worldview yeah thousand thousand percent so like we we have cns comics today but like what were what were i guess what drew you to that genre of storytelling the the illustrated graphic like versus you know writing more classic novels or maybe you did a little bit of both but ultimately what what geared you toward comics versus other storytelling medium it was actually the desire to see some of the things i was writing so like Legit, I was in love with the story I was telling myself. There were some things that, that are going to happen in the story that I, I really want to see. But I wanted to, to see the character of Talasha, of the stars, and the universe that, that she was in. She's really like a And this, a is, star this is Talasha, queen. correct? Yep, yep. That's Talasha, the stars, signature I character. I gotta ask, who is the inspiration both both from the idea and the imagery because old girl is finely designed is what I'll say, you know? <laughs> so the fro is, is like a Angela Davis, Diana Ross flow fro. That's what I sent. Uh, Edder Messiah did the original design for toll based off of like our back and forth. And really there was a, a painting. There's a two stretch canvas paintings that are actually the first images I had made when I didn't know anything about what I was doing. And just like, when you start doing stuff, I wasted money. We'll get to that. At some of course. Point, but, you know, don't be spending money if you don't <laughs> got to spend money. I'm not going to say it was wasted. They're beautiful. But I mean, don't I, I, I started kind of backwards. So um, that's that's an interesting story, too. But she um, so Angela Davis, Diana Ross were the influences for the Afro because she is a warrior. I want her to be strong. So she's she's built strong, like she's she's built to to battle because she is a warrior within the storyline. But yeah, the fro is the fro is important. What about the actual characteristics? Was there a person in your life who said like, man, this really influenced this individual who, who who's on the shirt, or like, was there something something that you experienced that? gave you the light bulb of like it'd be cool if we had somebody like this person to say the name for me again tolasha tolasha, tolasha. Of the stars so toll <laughs> is an interesting character because she is a collection of things her mm -hmm. faults are me like interesting her, her faults she expresses my fault um so the things that she does where you're like what the yeah i was you know me like you know you, you live your life so there's some influence from my 20s in there from like where you're just out there living to all you guys out there in your 20s that are struggling. Your 20s are hard, man. I don't know yeah. anybody who coasted their 20s. So don't feel like you feel. don't feel alone out there. Push through it. The 20s is hard. You're poor. Nothing seems to be working out. This is just your 20s, man. Don't don't surrender. Um but a lot of a lot of her flaws are me. Her outlook on the world really is trying to give you more of a, a clean slate to view existence, the universe of existence. So in the end, it, I don't think Toll's as relatable to people as some of the other characters. She's mm. godly in a lot of ways, and and so her the, superpower is she at the, is she at the, she's the top of the food chain when it comes to like apex predator she's got that apex predator type of view of things she just has no love for weakness but she values strength and and independence and so the things that she loves and believes in in a lot of ways are the things that i love and believe in and her faults are me but her overall character isn't based off of of anybody in particular she's more of a way for me to kind of carry you through existence the universe itself is is where you get a lot of um the different aspects of of myself as a as a writer and a creator are kind of embedded with different characters so they all carry kind of a piece of of me and a piece of different people i've seen throughout my life but toll is someone that i i think people will find difficult to relate to always she'll be kind of confusing mm -hmm. in some ways because she's fearless so her her superpower is ultimately that she knows no fear which sounds really cool but when you think about it as a as a human being somebody who doesn't get scared would be hard to relate to a lot of a lot of life for people are choices between fear and faith like mm -hmm. you did a segment on this right like i always mm -hmm. say fear and love but fear and faith is a good way to put it as well where you're either going to do something 
because you're afraid of an outcome or do something because you love and desire something and believe in, believe in an outcome. Um, so tolls never coming from the fear, but it makes her hard to relate to because it's inhuman not to be afraid. So there's, mm. she's, mm. she's interested in that way. Very, very, very interesting way to, to frame that. And so like, it's nice kind of hearing some of the background for the inspiration of the different, the, 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 the sort of the antithesis and then how it branched and segmented off into different characters. So you started with one, like, before I even get to CNS, like, what were just some of your favorite comics as a kid? And I got to ask this because we are of that generation, in my opinion, where the the comic craze definitely fell off a cliff. We started getting video games and... They turned into of, cartoons. The of, cartoons yeah. actually brought me back to the comics, ultimately, right? So Okay, so which cartoons really did it for you? Come on, man. You know, the 90s X-Men, they X had a Silver yeah, Surfer cartoon sure. <laughs> that made me want to go find out about the characters. But for me, it was kind of like once I got the books, I started feeling like the TV shows weren't enough. And then I started finding like characters that would never get a TV show. But X-Men right. is like the origin point of so many things in life. Like everybody, if you're born when I'm born, then you all, we all rock with that so that you know it hit like that but i i i would say that my favorite books were some of the older silver surfer books like when Yoshimi was drawn surfer um i love kirby I got like a Foom number 19 back here. My three favorite characters are are all on this cover. It's like a magazine about comics from way back in the day. Um, but Silver Surfer, Adam Warlock, and Captain Marvel uh. were some of my... Because I love the cosmic stories. The Space Wanderer works for me. So you get a lot of that with Talasha where she's kind of... Her exploration is just as much the story as other things. Because for her, she's new to existence. The universe of, of CNS Comics is existence with a capital E. Um, so she's out there exploring what it means to be. And really, the, the story itself is an exploration of what it means to be. And I think you get that. And especially with my favorite of all time, Adam Warlock, um, these stories, because they're such powerful characters, their conflicts end up being with um, how to behave and who they want to be and what they want their impacts to be, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, some monster that they have to slay. But there is some monster fighting and all that good stuff, too. So, Word up. But yeah, Silver Surfer, I love those books, but the Adam Warlock, that original Infinity Gauntlet run is a real, real fun one to read. Modern comics, um, reading through Saga right now. Saga is excellent. I think that's uh, it's, it's for adults, for grownups, but it's fun. It's funny. It's interesting. It's a, a really fresh take. Um, and they're coming out with the second volume. So I read a lot of different comics, but for superhero stuff, that's that's what it would be. The, the Adam Warlock, Silver Surfer type of deal. I love Thanos as a character. I got a thing for villains. I love the Hulk. Like, there's some really good Hulk runs, too. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of comics that I dig. But the ones that really got me started were the old Spider-Man books, the X-Men books, and honestly, Transformers. Transformers mm, has really good books. Were. IDW. Transformers comics are good. In your opinion, like, because I'm not, I would not call myself a, a comic guy, right? I'm not even a, a, a book guy, frankly. I don't really like books. I rarely pick up books. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a listening guy. I'll listen to books and I'll listen to things right, all day. Right. But, but actually picking something up and reading it and and it's just not my thing, right? But with that said, I'm curious. What makes a good comic book, in your opinion? Like, what actually makes mm. a good comic book when you see one and you pick it up? Well, like. What is it that does it for you? It can be a combination of things for me, right? Like it could just be sheer. The artwork is just bomb and I want to look at it, right? So that there's a possibility that you just buy the book because the cover is awesome and you flip all through the book and you read all, like you don't really read it all the way. You just really like the pictures and you start reading it and you're like, eh, the story's okay, but I really love the look of this book. So you could, you could like it for that. I've read some things that could be stick figures and the story's just so good. The story's good. Um, I guess, of course, the best is always when there's a blend of really, really good art and really, really good prose and they work together. When you say prose, what, what do you mean by that? Like the writing, the writing stuff, like you uh, said. Okay. Right? So like, 
to me when you're when the storytelling, the visual storytelling and the written storytelling are really in sync when the artist and writer are either the same person or the team is really synced up i don't know how else to describe it you can kind of see it when you see it where like it's really working it's just a like nice they blend. know what they're doing and it feels like it like it was meant to be type of deal so that the perfect blend is is the best there's some old valiant comics me and my friend were talking about earlier that were just really they were really really good books for the way they looked in a pretty classic style for the 90s and like the storylines were just crazy for the time like valiant had some good books i know a lot of people didn't read a lot of valiant but exo man of war is dope Ray, right. the samurais there's some dope books harbingers dope books so um he's still telling me to read uh damn i can't think of the name right now but it will come back to me at some point but there's there's a lot of good old books there's a lot of really good stuff getting made today like jonathan hickman has been making some really really good books um I'm going to pick up and read his Fantastic Four probably at some point, but I've read his X-Men runs, uh, his mm. Avengers a little bit. So a lot of good, there's, it's a lot. It's possible to be good in a lot of different ways. It can be kind of weird art sometimes. That's just interesting styles and, and good storytelling. So it's not a one size fits all type of deal. Okay. I know okay. I see it. All right. So tell me this, when it comes to going from being a comic fan and someone who makes their own stories, at what point did you actually start to say, you know what, I want to actually make a, a publishing company and a business out of this like not when you actually started the company but when did you actually say you know what i think i want to pursue this as more than just something i like to enjoy and indulge in on the side it's actually at in durham at the bull city comic-con i feel like maybe 2018 or 2017 mm -hmm. before the world ended and uh tuskegee airs was out there selling comic books and they're a black publishing company. They make some pretty cool books. It's like black peeps flying mechs. Like they're like Robotech style mechs where they're like jets that transform and form together. It's, it's really dope. <laughs> I got those signed issues, I think one, two and three, but I saw them. And then I saw some other black creators, Asian creators are just people of all makes and models making and sharing their work with each other and and this is like my first grown-up comic-con experience where you know yeah, i could buy something that i could really like go out and enjoy a little bit of what was happening and i was i was able to really mingle i had written this story and i i loved it and i, I wanted to explore taking it there but i wasn't sure if, if somebody would want to read something like that and then when i got out there i realized that you know the the creative world out there, the Comic-Con scene, people are down for some stuff. Shout out to you out there, Saeed. What's good? Durham was where you first, like, had the idea and you saw it and you got the inspiration by... Uh, I'd say Durham influenced. is where I first believed. I first believed. And you were influenced by other storytellers who had their own company and were producing content. And so at that time, what had you actually produced from a content standpoint? Have you, had I you had already written made? the entire series? So okay. I had written, I had written it out like a novel. I got caught up on wanting to see it. So I started to explore that route. Um, I thought about maybe doing a graphic novel, maybe doing just some images for it, but then I really got caught up on wanting to see it as a comic. And then I started to explore that route. And, but I had, I had written everything. So, all of the scripts, like the entire story, and then there's some tweaks that happen as I team up with my artists and we kind of do that melding of the storytelling where we kind of tweak. And a you few were doing this part there. before the Comic Con experience in Durham or after? Before. I had I had written this <clears throat> and then and you had an illustrator you were working with as well to help. No, no, I didn't have I didn't have any illustrator at the time. Okay. Um, but I wanted to know what that would be like. So I figured I'd go out and explore the scene a little bit and and that's when i realized yeah it could this could happen finding an artist was hard um because i don't draw i do letters now but all the stuff that i do art wise has developed over like the the years that we've been doing this like three or four years now but finding an artist was hard they disappear on you like i'm just going to be real they mm -hmm. they disappear on you you've been paying them money and then they just disappear for a hot second mm -hmm. so it's um building those teams up <laughs> and then getting some groups that you can trust is, is something else it's, it's a different i mean that's <laughs> arguably the toughest part of entrepreneurship is is hiring quality people that you can trust and build with over time like over time 
Yeah, you yeah. might get a one-off here and a something there, but who's actually going to be able to work with you over a period of time and have like the same level of care and pride in the work that's being done too? Like it's typically not equal equity in what, you know, and taking pride in the in outcomes and the work. It's typically somebody who cares a lot more than everybody else. But in a situation where you are the storyteller, but you're creating a visual book like a comic book, your story is not, say, nothing without the visual, but it's not a comic book without those illustrations. Right. <laughs> right. It could be it could be a novel and it would stand up well. It's got really strong prose. Part of the the hardest parts for us was not wanting to cut out all the script and understanding that it's got to it's got to fit on pages. But like the words, they were good. Like they when when the words are good, they inspire good art. It, it, it's an interesting process. And like you're saying, somebody who the artist has to enjoy the work that they're working on. They have to like like the script, mm -hmm. um, just like when you're trying to write a story for somebody, you got to like the concept of of what they want you to write on with them. They've got to, if they're not, you got to pay people because nobody should work for free. I'm just going to put that out there. Right. Nobody <laughs> should be like, if you're doing work together because you're building something, that's not doing work for free. That's building, building your future. But I, I pay people to do work when they do work. And the, those guys who have joined up with us to kind of build CNS comics. So Spetty Sousa and Kimney Pierre and all my siblings and everybody who help out, but like Kimney and Spetty who are really uh, rocking with the team, bringing their IPs on. They're people who draw their books and uh, produce their work. So I'll, I edit for them and I, I go through their scripts and we go back and forth and work through stuff. Um, and I don't, I'm not going to bill my own team. You know what I mean? We're not, mm -hmm. we're not like that, but somebody's got to care more than everybody else. The person who owns and founds it is always going to, going to care more. Like you, you're never going to have the person working on the cash register care as much as the person whose name is on the deed. And I don't think they should right like if you want people to care like their names on the deed you got to put their name on the deed but in that same breath if you want people to treat you like put if you want people to put your name on the deed with them you've got to be able to be willing to put in the work that comes along with having your name on the deed like the person with their name on the deed is the last one to get paid but the first one in the last one out so you just got to be a you know it's a, it's an interesting world it's an interesting thing to get into yeah so so you had that the 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 concept Pop into your head, CNS, like what does that name mean, CNS, comics? Like so, what does the name mean? And then the follow-up question is, when did you actually say, I'm making this a business? Mm. So Crump and Sons LLC is what we are officially as. CNS Comics is one of our DBAs. So we are, we are legally able to do business as CNS Comics, but we are an undesignated entity so that we can you know work in different enterprises. Crump was the nickname of my grandfather, John Crump Lee, on my father's side. He was an industrious man. So we are truly the sons of Crump. And my brothers help me. They do agribusiness and different businesses. So we're all trying our entrepreneur stuff and we all work together but crump and sons llc is is my llc and that's where the cns comes from we i, I started the business as soon as i was going to spend money <laughs> okay so when i realized that i was going to be investing up front in paying someone to do the artwork was that the the heaviest lift in terms of spending up initially up front yeah. was that where it was like yep. okay this is actually turning into something i need to be able to expense and yeah like yeah. yes so like on average right now i'm i'm paying on average like something like $100 per page. If we make a 24 page comic, you're in $2,400 just on the page work. Then you got the covers and all your effort and time included in that. So by the time that you actually start getting a book cover to cover, ready to print, and you print some books, you can be three, $4,000 in for a, a product that you're going to have between a five and $15 margin. Mm -hmm. So it's not a light investment. So like you, you have to sell a bunch of books to catch up a book at this point. I think we have made back between the Kickstarters and just selling books for the tells of the stars. We've paid for the cost of all of the books. I think we've made the, the amount of money it costs to make the books we've made back um, either by the Kickstarters or selling. But then we have all the other costs involved. So, you know, it's 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 something that 
you've got to grow over time in terms of people have to love what you're making, keep buying it, buy more of it, spread it out, share it to your friends and, and their friends. And you got to start hitting all the scenes and really engaging with the community and, and out there hustling your book if you want it to go. So yeah, it's most cool though. Cool trying to watch everything balance out. But yeah, as soon as I was like, oh, I'm going to these, you know, the first I asked one dude and he was like, I want $400 a page. I was like, all right, so this is, I'm in a different world than I thought I was in. We're, so, you know, coming up with different strategies to um, try to get some of it out there and get some support. We started off with 16 page books at $5 because I could afford 16 pages. And this was like our mini version, a way to get the stories out. So the first so when, three books were, were 16 pages. When, when did you drop the first book officially under the CNS moniker? October of 2019, issue one came out with the limited covers on a pre-order and I had sold like all of them pretty much off the gate. And then I didn't keep none for myself. So like I only, I had to stop, I had to turn it off and not sell the rest of them. Cause I only had like five left. And I realized that if you do limited covers or something, you should keep some of that stuff so you can use it later. Mm -hmm. Uh, my hustle developed over time. I didn't come out the gate with, uh, you know, you're, you do, you're, you got that type of mindset. You got that hustle brain. So, you know, like for a year, like, no, duh, you got to keep at least 10, 15 of those for yourself. But I was like, I need to sell everything I can. This costs me so much money to make. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't done and on me at the time. They're all gone now. You can't get a limited number one. The, there were only a hundred. They've all sold. I've got a test print in, um, in a frame. So I guess there's a hundred and one, but that one never saw, saw anybody else. But Wow. But that's, I mean, that's still a pretty significant accomplishment, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's it's tough to sell people things. Uh, it's very, very tough to sell people things. And when you create something from your brain and you work with other people to put it together, and then you go out there and actually, you know, put it in front of people and get the support and you actually get it through a, a, a form or a platform like Kickstarter, you know, I think it's just, you know, it's, it's shout out to you and CNS, man, because... That's not that's not easy. And since then, I know you've only continued to build out your your characters. And most recently, you 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 got stuff on the way with the new Kickstarter. So, you know, yeah. before we get into the, the the latest project, like talk to me. You you mentioned two individuals on the team, Speddy, and who was the other person? Kimney Pierre. Kimney Pierre. Speddy Very Sweet artistic Pierre. names on the team here. And then you got Wilson, but then you got Speddy and say, say the other one for me again. It was just so artistic. Kimney, Speddy and Kimney Pierre, Speddy Sousa and Kimney Pierre. Oh man, my name, his last name is so Speddy Sousa and Kimney Pierre. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wilson. Dang. Why, why do they have to do us like this? Why, why couldn't we get one of them fly? Come on, man. The sons of Will, the tribe is deep. <laughs> I love my stuff. I ain't hating on that. All the sons of Will raise up. We out here. Be proud to be a son of Will. <laughs> Yo, is that really what that, that that's is that is that what that name means? Yeah, like yeah, sons of Will, Will son. That's that old English construction. They really just say it like they mean it. Wow, had no clue. Okay, so real talk. Michael's sons are the sons of Michael. Wow. Okay, so when it comes to the team, just tell me a little bit more about those individuals and what they contribute. You know, given that you founded it, control the stories, what do these other individuals contribute? So Speddy, when I first started, hit me up and he was like, one day I want you to publish my book. And I was like, yeah, sure, Speddy, one day I'm going to publish your book because I didn't realize that, I, you know, you were doing it. There are the times of despair, but it didn't seem like I didn't originally set out to publish other people's books. Like I just wanted to make the Tales of the Stars series. I wanted to make sure that it remained the story that I wanted to tell. And then I got to tell it the way I wanted to tell it. Hence the slogan storytelling that storytellers love. But Spetty was like, I love what you're doing. And he was, he was just always supporting me from when I came out the gate. He's one of the earliest people to say, I like what you're doing. I believe in what you're doing. And one day I want to publish with CNS comic. That's dope. And I was like, you know, I used to say it, we used to say it all the time for years and years and years, but like by the second year, it, it was a real thing. And I was starting to try to figure out how I was going to help Speddy's book get out to you because I had a couple of successful Kickstarter. The first one was a flop. My first Kickstarter was a flop. I, I didn't 
cry cry but i cried cried you know <laughs> what i mean it was, it was like a cry cry but it was like a cry cry um but it was really sad like 10 people backed it they were all related to me i think um it's tough enough to get family and, to buy something you i mean that's still that's still oh, my people go bad. in like that's, my people that's, go in that's what's up like my I, hometown I goes I can't in get 10 like people my people Oh man, my I, look, I I cannot lie. Shout out to Havelock, Newburn, all the all the people that I came up with support, man. They look out, they they'll share it with their friends. I got grade school mates that still work with me. Oh, and and you know, I talk about the comic side and I, I forget to shout out my boy Russell, uh DR Harden from Yellow Cake, who makes all of our music and easy who does the animation because we're more than just the comic side of things so the the full team speddy came first so as soon as i felt like i was in a place where i could do something with speddy we linked up so speddy doesn't do the colors my boy andy coons does the colors that i met while we were in college so he helps out doing the colors i consider him part of the cns team i'm gonna look to publish some of his work as well moving forward but it became something where for people who were making their own stories but didn't have any way to put them out yet if you were just looking for some help with that i started off helping and then it ended up you know actually working together to to put their books out and sell their ips so kimney hit me up and said hey i was i'm looking around for somebody i can build with and i think you're the person i can build with do you want to link up on that so we linked up, we, you know, filling each other out, had some problems, worked through them as, as humans do. Like when you're trying to make something work, sometimes it takes a little bit of that, what do they call it? Creative abrasion to really <laughs> make something great. Um, and, and you have to build that trust. And sometimes part of the, the building trust process is the back and forth. And we found our way back together um, and, and, ended up back together as a squad. I also want to shout out the cosplay Bay Nay. Uh, that's her tag on Instagram, Nayana. She is a gym too. So she, we did a live show together for a hot minute. And now I tell you what, no, shout out to you for consistently doing shows. It is an exhausting venture. It takes special effort to put something together that's good, crisp, clean, and you do a great job of doing that. Um, so Appreciate kudos that, to brother, you man. for those prowess. I appreciate that. But we, we've dabbled in it all. So Nay did the very first Kalasha cosplay. The only one I've seen so far, but we're going to probably run a cosplay challenge here. <clears throat> put up something like a, the $150 top prize. and Amazon Cosplay Gift for the CNS and, characters? Like yeah, see, yeah, no, that's gonna yeah. Be, that's going to be dope. Yeah, so that's I'm thinking be dope. something like that coming this summer. Maybe we can Characters. do the reveal of like the winner, get the final three, maybe on G shit pod and give them and give them the prize live, something like that. We could just have them all I'm lined liking up to share. The way like, this sounds out here. Come on, man. I'm liking come the way on, this man. sounds out here. Everybody out there, I think that's something we should make happen. Uh, but definitely, I think that's going to be a summertime project. We got some things lined up that you know, where we're looking to partner a little bit more with that. So Kimney came through with his IP Amonians. We got Speddy's Dark Fantasy. So what did they bring to the table? They bring their energy, their efforts in helping us grow. So like the more of us that are sharing our content, the better. The more content we have, the better. So it also allows me to provide CNS Comics readers just a, a broader type of books. So like I make a, a fantasy story that's kind of accessible for all ages. It's an adventure story. Speddy's dark fantasy can get a little saucy. You're going to need to be grown up for that because it gets a little romantico if you know what I mean when I say it. Do you have nude images in, in these? I like, wouldn't say nude. Nude? Okay, okay. No no nude? I wouldn't okay. say nude, but I would say grown up. There's some... some. Is that nude? You're like a demon. Demons don't really wear clothes like that. <laughs> right, right. Okay, I got you. Body suit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. There, it gets a little. There's some moments where it's a little salsa, salsa. So, you know, grow up. You gotta grow up. Yeah. <laughs> Very not, but just. even even through the camera, like. The illustrations, the quality of the of the of the the, the book itself, it looks very yeah, like. We, see the gloss, like I can hear you flipping through them pages like that. They're made out of something. There, we're not giving you something that'll fall apart. Where uh, my buddy Max, he called them lotto tickets. Mm. You buying lotto tickets? So we're only going to get better. This this one is colored by Andy Coons, and the artwork is done by Speddy. The story is written by Speddy. 
I do some work on it. We go back with some some dialogue and some adjustments there. And then our buddy um, Adam Mullen did the editing on this because if I do the letters and I do writing on it, I try to get a different set of eyes because you always need you always need a different set of eyes. So we all team up and read each other's stuff there. That's Spetty's book, but the rest of the team. Russell from Yellow Cake is what he calls his production house. He makes all of our music live. Uh, all of our music for our animation is made made original for us. So there's no nowhere else you can get the type of things we're making. So this is right now on the website for y'all out there. You can read in honor of Spetty Seuss's Kickstarter for Dark Fantasy launching on March 28th. While well, I give him a quick plug in. We've mm -hmm. got Dark Fantasy issue number one on the website, cnscomics.com, on our What's New page for you to read. So you can actually read through that same book right there on the website, which I built the website. Holla at your boy. No, I mean, I got to admit, these I'm graphics are definitely boy. clean. These are, and I like the little, like, I like the, is that, what is that? Was that monochrome? Is that what you call that? With the grayscale with just little pops of color here and there? What, what it, do you? It's the grayscale. I call it the Frank Miller style. So like something like a Sin City. Right, right. We wanted to, or the spirit, we wanted something that popped like that. So I, I think Andy just does a really, really good job with the colors. Part of the reason we wanted to do it in this style is if you look at Spetty's pencil work. So Spetty is hand drawing these pages and we're scanning them in mm. and coloring them digital. Mm. So because they're hand drawn, his pencils keep the brush strokes. They're, it doesn't get all cleaned up digitally. It's really, right. it has a texture to it that I think was it really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I feel it. You, you can feel it when yeah. you're looking at it. Yeah. It, it it's, it's human still even though yeah. it's digital yeah doesn't lose all the flavor and when you really get it in your hand and you're looking at it um in print you can spetty's pencil work is is like a brush stroke it's very unique he's got a he's got a slick style and andy is a color master man he's doing masterful work with the colors i just make sure my letters stay out of the way you know that's mm -hmm. what they tell you as a letterer stay out of the way and make sure people can read what you're writing and so this is the first of spetty's dark fantasy series Yes. So we've got two issues out already and the Kickstarter is for the third book. What we're trying to raise funds for is to do more issues and we need to pay Andy for the colors. So we're trying to raise money to pay Andy for the colors so that we can make some more of the book. Spetty will draw his own book for free and I'll do the editing work and the letter work um, because we believe in it. But we got to pay Andy for his color work on that one. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what you guys help us do when you buy books, when you back the Kickstarters, when you spin our music on Spotify, search for that DR Harden and give us a play. All of that helps contribute to, to all the neat things that we've been able to make. It's just pretty cool. Shout out to the 50 folks following already the Kickstarter that launches March 28th. Um, we had a challenge where if we hit 50 followers before the launch, we're going to give an extra trading card. So everybody who backs a physical tier is going to get a bonus trading card already. You're already unlocking bonuses before we even go live with that joint. So word up. Say that awesome. day one more time. So this Kickstarter will go live and we got the link in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, we have the link in the description. Uh, and this will go live, you said March what? March 28th. March 28th. And so once you join and contribute to this Kickstarter of March 28th, what should those people then look forward to? So depending on which tier you back, you're going to get the books that are included in your tier. Um, we've actually got some. So Spetty's in Brazil, but he is sending... You know how I said he hand draws those pages? He's sending the hand drawn pages. Um, we're going to have three hand drawn signed pages from Spetty Sousa as the top prizes for this Kickstarter. So they're really one of a kind items on the original paper that the pages were drawn. So we've got that as an available prize. We've got trading card packs this round. And of course, you can get every CNS comic book we've ever made as a part of the Kickstarter, too, as an add on. Um, and there may be some surprises in there as we go along. Man, shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Thank you. Like, you know, this is, uh, you know, just in, in flipping through, showing people the example of the first one. You got the latest one on the way. This will be the third in, in the dark fantasy world of Spetty Sousa. Or is it Sousa or Sosa? Sosa. 
Sosa. Spanish I always Sosa. say Sosa, but that's that's me. It's Sosa. Sosa. Word. Yeah, mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. You know, being from North Carolina, man, trying to get them other languages, it's tough you know, on us. <laughs> we always end up country with it, no matter what we do. Can't help it, man. Facts. This is in there. So, no, nah, man, but this is th- this is this is fire, man. One, like like you said, like this website is is definitely well designed. Uh, they got the Kickstarter coming. If you if you are interested in checking out CNS. Uh, comics.com to see more plenty of information here on the website and you could just see the images they pop very colorful very detailed i do like how i'm a i'm an aesthetic guy i always like to look at stuff you know what i'm saying that so to, to the point about books the one thing i would do would look at pictures in books that would be the thing i would look at in books was pictures uh so i i definitely appreciate the artistic uh, quality here, not just with the hand drawings, but also with the coloring. Like you said, it's very detailed. It's it, it definitely pops. You got multiple joints out right now. I mean, my goodness. So you did all this work here on the website. This is all your work here. I'm seeing all the tiles flip. This is yeah, this is not yeah. That that's my building there. That's what, that's me. No disrespect to the, but this is not like Squarespace. It looks like this is this looks like some some originally designed, crafted, and even like the backdrop here. I'm looking in the background. Like, what's that See, image in the that, background? That is Kimney. Kimney drew the image of me as the Cosmic King. So mm. the full image isn't. It's just an incredible image. It's like mirroring the image of the cosmic king which he's got three faces got worlds within worlds and he's just mirrored out all over the place within the the main big image one day i'll, I'll send it to you so you can see it one day the big the, the master image is beautiful man we use it for all sorts of stuff but yeah when you when you got a team of folks that make amazing art you, you end up getting a lot of cool stuff man i ain't gonna lie this is dope I, I, you know, on a side note, we're going to have to talk, man, because I got an idea and I, I I got an idea for a character. And I would just love to talk to you about what that would look like creatively, because this is some this is definitely some dope work, man. What you got going on? And also, not just from the, the actual comics, but you also have great merchandise like what I'm wearing now. So I, I just got to highlight good the, on you. The quality of, of what you're doing, man, is definitely high quality, consistent. You just got started with the first release in 20, what was that? 20? Very first book in 2019. 2019. So got four issues of the Tales of the Stars out now, the fifth issue getting ready to come out this year. There's two issues of Dark Fantasy out with the third coming out this year. We got an issue of a spinoff series from the Tales of the Stars called The Captains, possibly Possibly you might get a captain's this year too. We do a project called Phase Zero. So every odd year, so 2023 is an odd year, we do like a mini anthology. So this year it's going to feature work from Kimney. It's going to feature some work from Spetty, from Andy. Pretty much everybody on the squad is going to put some of their own original stuff in a mini anthology with us. There'll be like four, eight, or 16 page snippets of a story they want to tell. Um, and then we'll put that out kind of in a collection. The first one we did was all stories written by me, but drawn by different artists because I wanted to test out, you know, different scripts. And um, Phase Zero is a way that I can give people a chance to build off of the same platform that we're on and, and try to access the same audience with their stories. The, the folks thrown in with us on the team word up word up man i i i really appreciate you joining man with with and, and sharing some of what cns how it got started some of your inspirations that that really led you to this point um before we you know start to close out here i do want to emphasize like we said we got the kickstarter for for Speddy's latest link. joint volume through make sure you hit that link show the support what do you have just to, to lead the people with i know we, we we mentioned a couple things but any final words anything you want to make sure you the, the followers and the listeners leave remembering about cns uh literacy is a, is a really important thing to me and and to the mission of cns comics is that that people read like you said pictures help people come to the work so if, if a picture mm-hmm. help you do some reading i love that it works that way that it gets you reading or listening to the audiobook, uh, we can never forget that we think in words and we need the words to understand how we're feeling and to be able to communicate that. Um, and I think it's very important for young people to read for that reason. So they have the words to understand themselves and to express themselves so that you don't get stuck on just being mad. The only word you have is mad and I'm angry. It's hard for you to put together um, 
thoughts that will think you out of that situation. So literacy is important. It's part of the mission that we have. It's more than just making something cool we want people to read. It's about trying to help build our communities back stronger, stronger mm -hmm. than they've, they've been. So that's what I would leave that, that we care about people reading and, and what that means for, for people when they do. You know, and, and just to, to further that point, you know, you, you said it at the beginning about it being mental. And I'm a big uh, advocate of the idea that everything around us, it all starts in the mind. The way you frame that, I think, is we, we need to highlight this because so many times as individuals, we get limited because of our inability to communicate. And we don't necessarily spend the time mastering the art of communication, not just from a speaking, but also a writing. To your point, literacy, it is important. And the better you can communicate, the better you understand yourself. That is a very, very important thing to highlight. Furthermore, once you are able to command a language that, that helps you relate to other people, it's a it's a valuable skill set communication and it's very tough to do that in, at an expert level if you don't read so to to your point like the fact that you 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 bring people to the practice of reading and, and literacy but through the medium of comic books and characters and crazy stories like that's what art is all about it's about taking the what they call it the honey and putting it in the medicine so that we can actually digest it and become better makes it makes growth more palatable when you are artistically involved and a, a medium like here with cns i think is is is, is definitely again worth highlighting the mission is a1 and we got to support these types of, of businesses, in my opinion, because when we talk about future, not only are you an entrepreneur trying to build something from the ground up, you're literally doing it, investing your own time. You got your family behind you. You're out here pulling together a team and slowly but surely you're scaling it over time. Who knows what we're going to see here when I follow up with you in a year, five years from now. Who knows what the universe will grow to. But the fact that you've already laid this foundation, man, I think you got some exciting stuff ahead. So shout out to CNS Comics. Shout out to those who aren't like me and actually like to read. I had to learn <laughs> to read, which is different. I it, it I genuinely don't like it, but I still had to learn. The discipline, like it. being disciplined enough to sit down and finish reading it. Yeah, you know? it is. I'm, I'm lucky enough just to love it, to, to love to get into a book. So, yeah, that is so important, man. And, and it's so important that we embrace this so that we put ourselves in position to have stronger futures. We cannot afford to, especially as people who descend from slavery, go generation after generation when, you know, they made it illegal for us to be literate and intelligent and, 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 and well thought with like, this was illegal for a reason, because it's a threat. The more literate we are, the more well educated and just thoughtful we are about who we are and what we're doing. They don't necessarily want that. And when we say they, <laughs> we'll just let y'all speculate on who they is. Shout out to the cosmic King. Shout out to CNS. Yo, leave me with the CNS drop one more time before we get out of here. CNS comics. Storytelling that storytellers love. I'm not taking no talk back. It doesn't matter how you feel.